Alrighty. So, we are two weeks out from the Caribbean Grand Prix, my next bodybuilding show. Figured I'd film this in the kitchen. For one, because I've never filmed in the kitchen. And for two, I want to spend more time talking about uh, my calories and my actual diet heading into this show. Uh, one clarification is we're more, we're closer to three weeks and two weeks. We have 19 days before the show, um, which means 19 days of more cardio and chasing after uh, more leanness. I will be transparent. When I do cardio now, I, I do cardio with the thought that I am fighting the amount of calories that um, I have been prescribed to consume on a daily basis. And just to go on that topic, I, I've been impressed and surprised uh, with the meal plan uh, that my coach has prescribed for me. Um, dating back, I don't know, a couple weeks, maybe I was six weeks out, the calories kind of went from, let's go, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go over it just because I find it very interesting. And I'm down for all of it because to me it's just data and it's just assessing and seeing what works and what doesn't. I am not attached to winning this particular show. To me, this show is a battle. I focus more on winning the war. And the war is greatest natural bodybuilder of all time. So the results of this show have nothing to do with the overall outcome of the war. With that being said, uh, let's see. All right, so October 14th, which was two weeks ago, uh, that was when I was like uh, three weeks out my calories were 3,143 with 383 grams of protein and 205 grams of carbs, 83 fat. Fascinating to me. Now we are basically two weeks away, two to three weeks away, and my calories are now 3,053 with 433 grams of protein, majority of it coming from chicken, 153 grams of carbs, and 73 grams of fat. Fascinating shit, fascinating shit. I've been learning about nutrition and educating myself on that for like the past, I don't know, uh, three years now. And everything I know has led me to believe that if you wanna get shredded, you have to eat in a calorie deficit and uh, moderate your intake, based, your macros based off of that specific goal of getting as shredded as possible. And that definitely is uh, the scientific fact that you got to eat in a deficit to get shredded. My interpretation of the meal plan that coaches sent me is, um, give me one second because my phone is going off. Jesus Christ, let me fucking call you back. All right, <laughs> my bad, sorry about that. Um, my interpretation of the calories that coaches prescribe me is that he wants, he wants to hit the, the trifecta, which is we have size, we have shape, and we have conditioning. Understanding that we're going against enhanced athletes, the likelihood is that based off of these amount of calories uh, so close to the show, I'm not going to be coming in as the most shredded person on the stage. But that also means that I won't be coming in as the smallest person on the stage. And we have to think about all three, size, shape, and conditioning. So the likelihood is that if we can hit that perfect balance of the right level of conditioning, complementing the shape and complementing the size, we do have a great chance of placing high uh, at the competition. And that's my whole interpretation of what's going on. Um, this past week, I've been, I found this one YouTube channel called Longevity uh, Muscle. And it's been really cool because the specific, it's like a podcast, and the specific host, I think his name is Kenny, or Kevin, one of the two, he, he basically only uh, interviews natural bodybuilders. And we're talking like OGs, people that have been in the sport for, you know, 10, 20 years, sometimes longer. I've watched several of these athletes uh, talk about their whole experience throughout their career. And it's given me a lot of great perspective on um, what I'm actually gearing up for 
so far as competing against those athletes for the title of greatest natural bodybuilder of all time and also what to expect like well I guess one thing that kind of pointed out that like uh, was enlightening to me was the notion that if you dedicate your focus to this you can be consumed over the next however long you're committed to this uh, sport and even more so than that that could be the only thing that consumes you if you allow it and what I mean by that is for this past year bodybuilding has been the only thing that I think about waking up and I think how can I peak my physique and that's been consistent for this entire year I am now starting to think I could move through life thinking just like that for a very long time 10 years 15 years 20 years just thinking how can I peak my physique to the best of my ability and the drawback of that is that I have been neglecting other aspects of my life as a result of this obsession and the obsession is not necessary so far as actually achieving a peak level physique so it's about like diversifying what's going on in your brain and actually what you're doing on a daily basis there were natural bodybuilders who are only training three times a week and still getting great results and that's kind of the shift in mentality that I'm I can see myself adapting to right now I'm training six days a week and I love it I, I have let bodybuilding consume me and I enjoy the process I enjoy the experience I enjoy training however I can see myself in the future still chasing after a peak level of physique but decreasing the frequency of training days just so I can focus and uh, apply myself to other aspects of the human experience that aren't specified to peaking your physique and on top of that the fact that you're allowing more time for recovery it is debatable that training less will actually create better gains so it's like in in one sense perhaps training six times a week is more of a psychological thing because you feel like you're getting it in consistently like oh every day I'm at the gym I, I give myself one rest day so like you know I'm going for it whereas physiologically it might be better off that you're actually taking more time away from the gym to allow your muscles to recover better so there's a psychological aspect and then there's a physiological aspect I would love to dive further deeper into uh, the two and understand what actually is best for optimization um, optimizing hypertrophy I'm gonna try both within the span of my career and we will see um, how that turns out a couple other thoughts that I will share I'm so glad that I found this sport. The thought that I had uh, while I was walking and doing my cardio today is that the reason I love this sport and the reason why I feel like I've always been looking for an opportunity to apply myself to a physical activity and it's been difficult for me to find one because I, I, I've never found one that actually I resonate with. First it was wrestling and I didn't really like the sport. I saw that I had some innate talent so far as my strength and power was concerned, but um, I did not have an affinity for endurance or technique, and those could have been developed over time, but because my passion uh, did not align with the pursuit of that sport, I kind of abandoned it. Um, rock climbing was a hobby that I really enjoyed doing, but uh, when I was rock climbing for six months, I lost all of my gains. Like, I lost a significant amount of muscle. Um, basically to imply that when you are rock climbing your body goes into a catabolic state because it doesn't need all that weight uh, to carry around if you're just rock climbing consistently so I kind of abandoned rock climbing because it didn't meet my aesthetic goals because I've always liked looking good and I've always liked having uh, great shape um, so then and like I said I didn't know that natural bodybuilding existed when I was 17 otherwise I would have started so much earlier I didn't pursue bodybuilding because at the time that I was a teenager, Ronnie Coleman was the GOAT and I never wanted to look like Ronnie Coleman. I just thought he was too big. So I never considered the sport. Had I known 
if there was a top natural bodybuilder when I was a teenager, I would have known I want to beat that guy. I want to be better than that top natural athlete. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. One, because I'm giving myself, it's a service to my younger self, and I'm also looking to create that opportunity for the next generation so that they know that natural bodybuilding is an option and it's a really cool one and they can chase after me as competition. And then they would have an idea as to like what they wanna do so far as the sport is concerned because like I said, uh, you know, Overall, I would say that this is a great way to express my level of confidence. And I feel like I've always struggled with that, surprisingly enough. Because when I move through life, I've always had this high level of confidence and self-esteem and sureness in myself, but it never came from anything. I couldn't point to actual successes in my life that indicated I should be confident in myself beyond the fact that I just felt that I was innately talented. Having this sport and being able to apply myself to this pursuit of greatness allows me to express my confidence in a way that people can understand. Being in a sport is competitive. You are going against other people for a title, for a chance of victory and success that is comprehensible to other people. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> just taking that in mind, it's like, thank God I found this, because now people can understand more so how, how my brain works, as opposed to just being an artist. It's like, oh, I just think I live myself. I don't have anything to show for it, but you know, sports, this is my product. This is the result of my confidence. So, there's that. Anyway, my phone is blowing up. This is just a little update, two weeks out. Uh, probably gonna hit the gym soon with my co-star Valley Muscle and uh, keep it trucking. Okay, see you on the next one.